So hi, everyone. Welcome to the ARIA introduction section, uh, session. I'm uh, Arthur Berezin, uh, Director of Product for Cloudify uh, by Gigaspaces. And again, today I'm going to introduce uh, Project ARIA. Now, before I dive into uh, ARIA itself, what it is, what it does, and how it operates, I want to talk a bit about you know, what's happening today and what's happening you know, for the past about 10 years in the, in the industry. So we've seen a lot of, inter a lot of uh, clouds, a lot of services, a lot of components that are being introduced, a lot of new technologies that are being introduced. Very popular technologies, you know, AWS become very popular. You have now OpenStack at, at the OpenStack Summit, where we are which introduces lots of new APIs that we can consume. And basically, every new technology that's been released for the past 10 years or so is, is introducing a new set of APIs. So basically, we have a lot of new services and new services coming, coming around together. Uh, and we have like, you know, basically a, a dawn of APIs where everything is, is, is automatable. We can talk to almost every service out there, make API calls to automate their uh, the creation of resources, their destruction of resources, etc. But you know what this actually creates is is a zoo of, of various API calls and various different types of types of APIs, uh, which behaves differ differently. And we also have lots of lots of tools to automate these APIs. So you know, obviously, we can go uh, create our own uh, our own uh, tools that that make API calls. Uh, to automate some processes, but again, you know, essentially we have a bunch of tools, and each tool has its own orchestration language, and its own language to describe these kinds of services, and this actually, you know, creates this, this digital Babylon where every single service, every single automation tool, management tool, platform tool, is using different language. But also, when there is a, a you know, there is a common language, which is Tosca. So Tosca was introduced to become this standard language to describe uh, cloud applications. Uh, and also, like when we take even Tosca and the different implementations of Tosca, there are some variations between that. And actually, that's, this creates some, uh, some uh, mis, uh, misalignment between the various tools. Uh, so there's actually no real standard even around that. And the main reason uh, behind that is because Tosca is basically a sp is a spec. It's a spec, you know, consists out of you know about 250 pages, and every vendor is trying to implement that, doing that, implementing that a bit differently. So by the end, the the actual application blueprint uh, looks uh, a bit different. And you know, if I look at what it would take to create an orchestration language, so you need several common things and several common tools. Uh, to create such an orchestration language. So obviously, you have like the normal words you would like to describe your resources. You know, obviously, like, like in English, we have a bunch of words, and we all understand the meaning of those words. So you know, in the orchestration, in the orchestration uh, language, that would be like servers or the different types of resources we can consume from those clouds. Then you have the abstraction of words. So you know another example of that is the word "cool." You know, back in the day, it, it meant temperature. Now it means you know if you put it in a context of, of a situation, it ha it uh, it's getting an, an additional layer of meaning to that word. Uh, you have uh, the ability to extend such languages. Obviously, you know, taking several components of a language and putting them together in a single word. Uh, but also, you have the the ability to compose several words together or several sentences together to bring up you know the wider meaning. Of the of a phrase of a wor of a word of a poem, so you know, these are the common common things we need for a language to describe certain things. So I'm going back to our, I'm going back to this example in a bit to, to basically see how this maps into Tosca and the, the way we see uh, Tosca within Aria. But in a sense, Aria is a reference implementation of Tosca, uh, which is open source. Everyone can consume it. And it also has an open governance uh, around it. So it's not a one company led, rather a project everyone can contribute to and can consume without, you know, without the, the worry that this is a single vendor or a single company or, or a single ecosystem led project. So, uh, and we're, uh, we're, we're uh, right now in the process of incubating uh, ARIA into the Apache Software Foundation as, as part of the Apache Software Foundation uh, projects. 
So obviously, you know, us and, and us from, from the Cloudify team, we've been working a lot with the Oasis uh, Consortium, uh, working a lot on the Tosca specification. And the main idea and the main goal behind ARIA is uh, for it to become, you know, the reference implementation of the spec, but also provide the feedback and provide the use cases and provide, you know, the more complex scenarios back to Tosca to basically to, to extend the spec to make it real and make it make sure that the spec actually follows, you know, the the uh, the, 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 the more complex use cases we are seeing in the in, this in the industry, and obviously, you know, once these new notions and these new uh, new use cases are being defined as part of the specification of Tosca, uh, Aria again implements these kinds th th these uh, specs that are defined as part of the the as, as part of Tosca. Uh, and then we have all the projects, and Cloudify is one of them, consuming the ARIA, consuming the ARIA libraries. Uh, and, and actually, what this allows uh, the industry to gain is to have the, a shared uh, set of libraries uh, and, and a shared implementation of, of, a, of, a, uh, of a specification. So, you know, essentially, we would have a single blueprint that all, all of these projects would be able to orchestrate, and there would not would, would, not, would not require any any translation or any any changes or modifications to the blueprint to orchestrate on the using different tools. So ARIA includes a DSL parser to parse the application blueprint. Uh, it includes a workflow engine, so you can do a bunch of you know custom workflow uh, workflows uh, uh, into it. But also it has a set of uh, lifecycle workflows that are built in. So you can install the application, you can uninstall the application, uh, you can trigger scale or heal events as part of that application, and obviously you can configure you know, the, the, the implementation of, of, of these workflows. So basically for every type that you use when you define the application itself, you can set, you know, you can set the specific imp implementation for each component, uh, and this, this basically creates Tosca-based orchestration engine that could be integrated with different projects. Now, another key uh, and a very important element to Project Aria is the plugins, uh, the plugins uh, layer. So, the way Aria works is that it introduces plugins, and every plugin that is introduced into Aria basically allows the user to consume new node types. So if I'm int introducing an OpenStack plugin to ARIA, I can basically orchestrate the OpenStack resources uh, that, uh, that, uh, that OpenStack provides. So ARIA obviously talks with a different, uh, with bunch of different types of APIs and basically makes the API calls. So again, ARIA takes the application blueprint, parses it, translate it to the relevant uh, plugins that it needs to trigger, and then the plugins trigger the various API calls uh, to implement the application blueprint. And I've talked a lot about Tosca, but to, to those who are not you know, up to up, uh, on top of what Tosca can do and what, you know, what Tosca can be used for. So with Tosca, I can describe my application topology okay, using a simple YAML uh, descriptive language. So I basically describe uh, the, the various uh, node types that I, can, well, I would like to use as part of my application topology. So I can describe you know, the, the OpenStack compute server, for example. I can describe a, a container that would run on top of that virtual machine. I can describe relationships between the various objects. So I can say my Node.js application that runs on top of the container is connected to my Java application on a different VM that runs you know, on, a, on a different server, and it could run even on a different technology. So for example, my, you know, my Node.js application could run on OpenStack, but my Mongo, my, my, my database layer, my persistent database layer, could be running on, in, on a VMware machine. And using Tosca, I can describe this topology, all its relationships, uh, in order to orchestrate this application. And again, part of that, I can also specify inputs, outputs, uh, which are also crucial to the application blueprint. So I can set you know, things as, as a specific port that I would like to c customize if I'd like to set a specific IP address for this application. Uh, and also, as part of Tosca, I can set uh, workflows and policies. 
So earlier I mentioned a few, uh, few uh, attributes of a language. And you know, we're seeing Tosca very much aligned to these attributes that are very much needed to create a very rich language for orchestration. So as part of Tosca, I can define, I have uh, my norm normative types that I can describe. So for example, uh, Tosca nodes compute. I have the notion of abstractions. So I can abstract layers. I can uh, extend them using the plugins mechanism. So for example, I have here the Kubernetes microservice uh, node type that I've, you know, I've, I've consumed from the plugin I've introduced into ARIA. And I can also do composition, which is you know, the more complex stuff and the more the real applications that I would like to describe. So for example, I can take you know, a big, big application and, and break it into several microservices and basically compose several blueprints into a single application point of view. And I can orchestrate that application and maintain each and every component separately, you know, basically following the microservices approach where every microservice has its own uh, life cycle. So ARIA is a command line interface. I can simply execute application blueprints using a YAML file, or I can just integrate that using the Python library uh, that it introduces as part of my Python uh, project code. So two examples to showcase what I can do with ARIA. So this is uh, a bit uh, gravitated towards, uh, towards NFE. So this is an example of, of a DNS uh, microservice uh, that I can introduce, a, a DNS uh, NFE that I can introduce. And this describes the topology of that uh, microservice. You also have the link here, so you're welcome to, to, to check out the code and the actual application blueprint behind it. But I can also compose several blueprints and several applications into a microservice, into, sorry, into a service chaining and combine, the two, combine several services together to create chains between the various uh, services. And again, here I have also the link so you can check out uh, the actual code behind that later on. So I'm welcoming you to go to uh, the ARIA website and check out our GitHub repo. And I'm welcoming you to join our community and basically consume uh, the ARIA code base. Thank you.